Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Apologies for the delay in putting out a video. I've been really, really busy, but hopefully I'll be back on schedule. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the differences between doing a big project and a small project. Now, the reason I kind of want to make a video about this is really because a lot of people, me included when I was a young engineer, really loved to brag about the size of the project which I was working on. For some strange reason, some people just love to brag about, oh, I'm working on like a 50 million pound or a 100 million pound project, you know, and they make it sound like this really big thing. And some people go like, wow, you know, big project that must be amazing to work on. And don't get me wrong, it can be great to be working on such a huge project, but it can be really, really misleading because some engineers, whilst they are technically working on a 100 million pound project, for example, the amount of work that they're actually doing could be a tiny bit. So some people like will brag, oh, I'm working on a 100 million pound project, and then you ask them what they're doing, and it's like, oh, I'm just designing the balconies. Like, you know, is it really something to be like brag worthy about? And as a young engineer, if you're trying to you know follow this path of doing the biggest projects of them all, as a graduate, you're not going to be really doing the whole project. You're going to be pretty much pigeonholed into doing certain aspects, small parts of a large project. And I know people who you know, work for big companies, work on big projects, and they're stuck doing foundations for like a year, which can be pretty horrific. And don't get me wrong, if you're pigeonholed into doing foundations for a year, you might become really, really good at designing foundations. But as a young engineer, I would kind of, you know, if I was to give some advice, is to make sure you get a really well-rounded experience doing all sorts of the project, foundations, superstructure, managing the project, looking at the finances, make sure you do, you know, every little bit to gain a really wide range of experience and do more projects. That's why I kind of feel that doing more smaller projects as, you know, as a, as like a graduate is better than just doing one really big project. And you'll see that engineers will advance faster if they're doing sort of small, medium sized projects more than just huge projects because they're not just given that exposure to, you know, oversee the whole project. And to advance quicker, you really need that whole project oversight, you know, designing, management, finance, going to meetings. You need all of this kind of experience to really progress. But it's not to take away from what you can learn on big projects. Big project experience is also really, really important because there are just some things which happen on really big projects, which you will just never see on small projects. You know, an example is if you're doing a hundred story uh, tower block, there are just some things which you would never need to consider on a smaller project. You know, the effects on wind, the dynamics, you know, um, actual shortening. These sorts of things would, you would never even consider on a smaller project, even a 20 story tower, you wouldn't consider really consider these effects. You'd maybe look at them, but they're not gonna be that critical compared to when you look at them on a hundred story tower. But on the complete flip side, there are loads of things on a small project which, again, you won't see or you won't really necessarily do that much on a really big project. I know some engineers who you know, start in a big company, work on really, really big projects, and they have no idea how to design a beam for a small residential house. For me, as an engineer, the thing which I really wanted to learn about was to be able to design my own house or to say make an extension of my house eventually. I wanted to have that expertise so that I could do these sort of things. When people find out you're a structural engineer, they almost expect you to be able to design a house, sort out problems in a house, you know, put an opening in a wall, do all these kind of what we essentially call basic structural engineering things which you would never really learn if you only had large project experience. The first time I really, really encountered this was when I moved to a smaller company and the girl that they hired to be my manager essentially was, you know, really, really useless. And she was designing, or she was trying to actually teach, um, I think we had a placement student for like a couple of weeks and she was trying to teach her how to design a beam to go into this, you know, small residential home because they were knocking out a wall. And because she basically had no experience dealing with this kind of stuff, she spent 
enormous 305UC, so a really huge beam to go in it because she was only considering the dimensional requirements to support the wall, not the fact that this beam was so big and so heavy it would be almost impossible for the contractor to fit it into this house. And this is why having experience in big projects, small projects, medium projects is really, really important because you gain perspective on different things. So in essence, this video is just, just to say that it's really important that you get a really wide range of projects under your belt, you know, medium, small, large, new build, refurb, you know, house bashing, you know, you want some experience in doing, you know, those developments which have loads and loads of houses because once you've done one, that's fine. You probably don't want to do them again because it's quite boring, but the experience you do from doing that kind of project is actually really, really invaluable to your career. Looking at big sites, looking at you know, retaining walls and cutting costs for the client because they're doing this on such a large scale and you know house types are going to be repetitive. So you want to be really efficient in your design and you, you know, to get on good terms with the client, you want to be saving them money. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I saw this quite kind of Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I actually saw this question come up on Reddit and I thought it'd be quite interesting to make a video about it. So here we are. Anyways, if you've enjoyed it, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.